Hi, Steve Bradshaw here. So one of the requests I'm seeing a lot of questions about uh, with NVMEs, and you all know how much I love NVMEs, is that they people receive their brand new system, be it a Power 9 or a Power 10. They've ordered the NVMEs in there. Maybe it's got 1.6 terabytes. Maybe it's got 3.2 terabytes. Uh, they power the machine up, and all they see is two disks. So the example you can see there in front of you. So I've got my shiny machine here. It's got a pair of 3.2 terabyte drives in there, but you know, I powered it up and it only has two 200 gigabyte disks. So what happened? Well, when the machine was configured and ordered, there was a, an option to say how big you wanted these disks to be, 200 or 400. And there was an option to say, do you want IBM to pre-configure all the disks and make them available? Uh, the default is 400 and the default is not to make them all pre-configured. So in this case, you can see it was changed to 200, uh, but the option to change all of those to be uh, pre-configured so they're available it really isn't a big deal okay but it can be a bit disconcerting so how do you do it well pop into sst so in this machine here let's get into the system service tools okay we want to work with disk units okay we want to work with the disk configuration number two we want to work with mvmes there you see number 13 Okay, we want to create some namespaces. Namespaces are what internally these virtual disks are called. So you've got one NVMe that may be 3.2 terabytes and it's carved up into multiple namespaces. So let's take number three there. You can see that I've got two NVMe's listed. So each of these lines is a different NVMe module. One's in the C0 slot, one's in the C1 slot. You want to see what that looks like, go to the unboxing video. So we go inside there and I can see at the moment that I currently have one namespace configured on this 3.2 terabyte uh, drive. Uh, it's based on uh, 200 gigs have been used and I've got my three terabytes left. So down the bottom here, I can say how many namespaces I'd like to create. Okay, and then how big I'd like them all to be. So if I wanted to do all of them, I could pop in there 15 uh, and make each one 200 and that would max out the space on this. I'm gonna play with some ASPs later, so I don't wanna do quite that many. So I'm gonna create uh, another eight namespaces, each of them to be 200, press enter. So that tells me that this is what I'm currently using. I have one and I'm gonna end up using a total of 1.8 terabytes, leaving 1.4 available of the total 3.2 and I'll have a total of nine name, uh, namespaces. Okay, so that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna uh, press F10 down there to confirm my choice and it's gonna go off and it's gonna create them. This is only doing it on the first of the two namespaces. I need to make sure they match because I want to mirror these two NVMEs together. All right, so I'm gonna go and do the same again, create namespaces, and so I'm gonna pick the second one down. Currently, I'm only using one, just as we saw before. So I'm gonna pop in there my eight and my 200. Okay, gonna confirm the namespaces to be created. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, those namespaces are now there and are now available. So you can see that when I look at them uh, under my ASPs, they are there. They are currently not configured. So that's made them available to be used, but that in and of itself doesn't allow them to be used by the machine. They're there, but you see they're still not in the ASP yet. So we'll need to add those into the ASP. I'm going to break it in half and do a separate video for the adding into the ASP next. Uh, but the short answer, if you want to IPL, uh, add them into the one, uh, and then IPL machine, it'll do the mirroring, uh, but we'll deal with that later. What I did want to show you is why this wasn't uh, in there in the first place. So I talked about the fact that the default, uh, this is the e-configuration tool that us business partners use to design the systems and order the systems. So the default here, look, is just have one uh, to be based on the 400 gig namespaces. So uh, I would recommend actually that you go down to the 200 gig ones. This means that you end up with more virtual disks, more namespaces. That makes the IBM I storage engine run faster. Okay, and then this option here, so that you actually say to IBM, when you deliver the machine, uh, could you please max out the number of spaces that I have based on 200? So if you wanted them all to be available, they'd be there right there and then. Listen, I hope that was useful. And I will come back and do another part of this as to how to add these into the ASP in a separate video uh, to follow on. Cheers for now, TTFN.
Okay, so we're back. Uh, in the first part of this video, I bet you didn't even notice the gap. Uh, we looked at how to add these namespaces in to a NVMe so that you had all of those extra disks. They're there, they're configured, but they're not that usable in your uh, system. So now we need to, again, be in DST, work with the disk configuration, and we are going to take the options to actually add these disks in and make them usable. Okay, so before we were working with the number 13 to work with the NVMEs, okay, this time we're going to actually add them into uh, an ASP. So let's do a number two. Okay, we're going to add them to an existing uh, ASP. So I'm going to put this actually all in ASP1. So it's just all in Syspass. So we're going to see uh, we created uh, eight on each. So there's going to be 16 listed down here, and I'm going to put them all in. So just sit there and whack them. One's next to all of them, and it's going to add them in to ASP1. If you did want to create a separate ASP, you could just put the ASP number there. This is now going to confirm what we're going to do. Okay, so you see how it's grouped them together. So those two, it's realized that they are on different NVMEs, and because the NVMEs have been mirrored, it automatically knows to put them together. So there we go, that first unit and the second unit, and the same all the way down to our ninth unit. So I'm going to end up with nine mirrored pairs. Okay, if I wanted to see what the capacity was going to look like uh, at the moment, I can see that I just had a protected size of 200. I'm going to end up uh, with uh, 1800, so 1 1.8 terabytes, and that'll go down from the 21% it's currently using down to 2.4%. All very good. Uh, if I press um, enter, it'll add it. If I do an F10, it'll add it and redistribute the, dis the data across those disks. So why not? So when I hit the F10 on there, it's now going to start that function to go actually bring those disks, which have been created, uh, but actually add them in and make them usable by the system itself. So this process is a little time consuming. Um, but uh, it's going to sit there and that'll go through and do one, two, three, four. Guess what? When it gets to 100%, it's going to say that it is fully complete. And then when you look at the disks, they will all be available. So I'm just going to pause the recording for a second because you really don't want to watch this count lawyer to 100. And I'll show you the screen uh, when it's got to 100 and uh, then what it looks like back in the system. Spoiler alert, uh, it should look like it's working again. Okay, so we can see now that all the disks have successfully added. See that message at the bottom there? Units have been added successfully. So let's just step back out. If I was to display the configuration status, you can see ASP1 now has all of those pairs of disks in there. So we've got nine pairs of disks. Each of these has one element from each of the actual NVMEs. Fabulous. So when we finally get back to the operating system, so let's exit back out of there and do our work disk status. Instead of just the two disks we saw before, we can now see that there are nine pairs of disks in there. And over time, it's going to start balancing out the data across them. Uh, you'll always favor a certain amount on the first pair because that load source uh, disk, the disk that your machine boots from, does have to keep a certain amount of it back. But the rest of it will get spread out. And as the machine is using more of the data, it'll spread it evenly across the disks. So I hope that was useful. So for those of you who are ordering new machines and haven't put the final order in yet, please remember to actually get your business partners to uh, A, go with the, the 200 gig namespaces. But if they, even if you don't do that, get them to configure all of them, then you won't have to take the steps that I've just taken. So TTFN, any other requests or advice or things that you would like us to do, please let me know. But for now, it has been our pleasure as always.